Valdegard leads the field away. It's raining and the sky promises more to come. Next away is Britain's Roger Clark. Sebo Lampinen in the first of the three Lancia Stratos races. Once out of Nairobi, it isn't long before they hit the first really wet conditions. Roger Clark obviously means business. Bjorn Voldegaard's a little more cautious and takes to the water halfway through. Simo Lampinen changes his mind about taking it flat and settles for half in, half out. Sandro Monari tries to avoid the water altogether and almost succeeds. Three times winner Jaginder Singh tries to avoid it too, but gets into uncharacteristic difficulties. It's Jean-Pierre Nicolas in the Peugeot who has the most individual approach, though it's hardly the quickest. Finish ace, Ari Vatanen in Ford Escort number 14, having his first taste of the safari. He treats the water with evident respect. Before long, dry roads give Ari a chance to return to a more characteristic pace. Young Finn was taking his first safari very seriously. He was bitterly disappointed when rear axle trouble combined with appalling weather conditions to eliminate him on Saturday. Not only Ari was to have trouble, Hanu Mikola was to retire even earlier. Vic Preston Jr. in escort number 18 soon to hold second place in one of his best performances in seven years of safari driving. of the rally, Rano Altonen in Datsun number 17. Davinder Singh, teammate and brother of Jiginda. on the first night. It will be one of the worst and wettest nights in safari history. Fewer than half of the 68 starters will survive the rain, floods and seas of mud. Good Friday dawn at I-10 in the Charangani foothills. Well, we've had about eight inches of rain in the last four days here. Two nights ago we had three inches and then last night maybe about an inch and a half and then last night it rained for the whole night, about two and a half inches again. 
Bjorn Valdegard arrives at Aite, already rally leader by more than half an hour. Mud clogging the wheel arches is a problem. Um, Harry's had a disco. And Roger's had a water pump fall out. But, uh, <laughs> end passage control and the first of the Lanciers. The car stops on the driest patch the driver can find while the co-driver picks his way through the mud to check in. The set average speed of the rally, over 60 miles an hour, includes all stops and there's no time for gossip. Jean-Pierre Nicola, third behind the escorts of Voldegard and Preston Jr. The Peugeot's broken windows have been caused by fun-loving but stone-throwing villages. Co-driver Jean Tote jumps back in and they're off. Voice of Kenya Television writes at the point of action. The school books say the equator is hot and dry, but this was it on Good Friday afternoon, and just look at the weather. The escorts of Voldegard and Preston still lead, with both drivers showing incredible mastery of the conditions. Monari Stratos chasing the leaders hard. He can only hope that trouble will hit the escorts as he wipes at the windscreen. Saturday dawns and it's still raining. Near Matatani, Volvigard hits more floods and again uses caution. While Rano Altenen, now fourth in his Datsun, uses a more dashing approach. So does Monari, and look at the water inside the spotlights. Ever cheerful Scotsman Andy Cowan in fifth place and leading the Colt Lancers. At Sagana, on the edge of the Aberdare Mountains, the rains have turned a quiet stream into a lake 500 yards across. Local children wade out to mark the road as Shinazuka's Lancer tackles the crossing. He's lucky. The leaders hit this lot in the dark. Sunday, the cars left Nairobi again for the southern leg and some welcome sunshine and dry roads towards Mombasa. At Jiriyama, a few miles from the Indian Ocean, dust is a problem again. This is Andy Cowan's Lancer lying third now. Voldegard's escort is still leading and sounds as good as ever. Martinens Dutson, second overall now, but minus his back window. Vic Preston Jr. down to sixth place after electrical trouble in the night, but still strongly in the hunt.
Monari Stratos, now fourth, but chasing hard as he hurls the lightweight racers of the village. In 1976, safari winner Juginder Singh, going well but a long way behind the leader in fifth place. Mazeras, where the usual flood water is lower than ever before. Voldegard still takes it gently. But Altenen is as dashing as ever in his hot pursuit of the leading escort. Big Preston's brilliant safari is nearly over. He'll be forced out in the Taita Hills on Sunday afternoon with a broken clutch and bell housing. The Ford service point at Voy is tense. A rock has fractured a brake pipe on Voldegard's escort, and the temporary repair, leaving him with only three brakes, has cost him some of his lead. As mechanics swarm over the car to complete the repair, Voldegard, fatigue showing in his face, climbs out to stretch his legs before the last long night of the rally. While the work goes on, co-driver Hans Torzelius sorts out his pace notes. Do you know how much time does this cost you, this break? Uh, the work took about 10 minutes, and then I, I think I lost a little bit, so I had to drive a bit slower. But not much. Not much. So you still got good lead still? Yeah. Easter Monday morning. It's been another night of terrible conditions. At Nyeri, Bjorn Valdegard's escort still leads. But Rano Altena hasn't given up yet during his best safari performance in 15 years. At Maranga, the worst is over. Only a disaster can take victory from the escort. Bjorn Valdegard is as good as home. His escort speeds back to Nairobi after what must rank as the finest drive of his career. The final run in to the finish through spectators who jam the roads up to 40 kilometers out of the city. In 25 years of safari rallies, the Silver Jubilee event has been the longest, wettest and toughest ever, with only 12 of the 68 starters reaching the finish. For Voldegard, it is victory at the sixth attempt. It's the second win for the Ford Escort, and the second two for a Swedish driver.